Ladies and gentlemen, Paul Leslie presents. And now your host, Paul Leslie. Aloha to Derek Trucks of the famous Derek Trucks Band. It's a pleasure to have him on the show. Welcome on the show, Derek. Cool, man. Good to be here. The variety of music that the Derek Trucks Band plays is very eclectic, to say the least, uh, lending for a lot of international styles, like Eastern Indian or Latin. What do you think the reason is behind this worldly influence on the Derek Trucks Band music? You know, it's it's just the music that uh, I think has has moved and influenced everyone in the band. You know, there's um, Ali Akbar Khan introduced his music really introduced me to Indian classical, and then from there, um, Kuali, the Pakistani music, um, a lot of music from Africa all over. There's a great guitar player from Madagascar named Gary, and uh, there's just a lot of music that uh, that's really changed the way I hear music and changed the way I want to play it. I, I think there's a uh, there's a huge amount of music out there that, especially uh, in 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 this country, that that people are really unfamiliar with. And I think it's a uh, there's a whole world of music to be explored and and hopefully turn people on to. So that's kind of one of the missions of the band. I was listening to one of your songs and it almost sounded like an Indian sitar. Was uh, the Indian sitar any of those Indian types of instruments, was that ever an influence on you? Yeah, the saro, the sitar, um, the sarangi, the, uh, a lot of great tabla players, a lot of great Indian vocalists, but yeah, there's there's been a lot of uh, Indian classical musicians that I've really checked out. Tell us how the Derek Trucks band formed. Just years on the road, you know, you run into people. Like me, Todd Smalley, uh, Jan Rico Scott have been together for over 10 years uh, through Colonel Bruce Hamplin, a great musician from uh, from around Atlanta, Georgia. Um, whenever I was looking for uh, any players, I would call him and he would have a list. And then, uh, you know, through playing with uh, O'Teal Burbridge um, with the Clarem Rescue Unit, I met his brother, Kofi, and uh, I met Mike Madison through... Uh, uh, some other channels but you know you just it's a small musical community out here you kind of run into people put the word out and um, a decade or so later here we are the Derek Trucks band recorded a live album at the Georgia Theater and it's been nominated for uh, an award what do you think about Athens Georgia this is one of those uh, the Georgia Theater and, and Athens one of those places that we played uh, forever with uh, a bunch of different uh, and a bunch of settings. Everyone in the band has played the Georgia Theater, so it almost feels like a house gig. You know, we've we've been here so many times. That's one of the reasons we chose to do the live record here. Um, always seem to have a good night. There's been some there's been some amazing shows uh, come out of the Georgia Theater. A lot a lot of bands have come through here. Do you ever feel like the Derek Trucks band is doing something to preserve types of music and to expose people to types of music that they may not have heard? You know, on a good day, that's what you're trying to do. You want to you want to expose people to, you know, to to old things, to new things. Um, I think there's so much great music um, that's been done that people are just completely skim over um, a lot of the uh, traditional music, some of the. Uh, the hardcore Delta Blues stuff that we pull out, or the obscure jazz tunes, or you know even some of the obscure R&B tunes. Um, a, a lot of times, the reason we do that is to, uh, you know, to influence people, and especially the younger fans, introduce them to people like Sunhouse, Booker White, Charlie Patton, Skip James, uh, or you know the straight ahead tunes. Introduce people to Wayne Shorter and Dexter Gordon. Um, same with the Indian classical and the Kowali. You know, I, I think. Um, and it's just a small way for us to, um, you know, to tip our hats to the people that really influenced us. I think it's important to, uh, you know, hopefully carry the music forward. But you got to understand where your where your roots are. How do you react when people say that the Derek Trucks band is impossible to categorize? <laughs> you know, we, I, I, it's a good thing for us. Um, I mean, it's it's hard when you uh, release a record and they try to figure out where to put it in the stores which is usually nowhere, but, <laughs> you know, when people ask me what kind of music we play, it's the same thing. But, you know, it's it's all roots-based music, you know, whether it's uh, whether it's world music, blues, jazz, funk, whatever. You know, it's all soul music, hopefully. <laughs> I want to ask a quick question about the Allman Brothers fans. Uh, how do most of the Allman Brothers fans react when they hear the Derek Trucks band? You know, you get a variety of uh, the Almond Brothers have such a huge fan base. Um, you get people that are 
they come out and see the band and they're, they're really into the different things that we do and that and it you know it, it's kind of why they listen to the almond brothers is you know the fringe uh, music that they play and then there's other people that come out and you know what we're doing is far too eccentric for them <laughs> so uh you know but that's I, I think if uh, if you're doing anything meaningful or that's going to last, you, you're not going to please everyone. <laughs> at least not at first. Sometimes uh, it takes repeated listenings. One of the things I was thinking about when I was listening to some of the Derek Trucks songs, it's almost like you guys are cooking your own meal, and you're taking a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's like a plate of your own fixings. So, just out of curiosity, what kind of stuff did you listen to when you were a little younger? You know, the first things I remember hearing were, you know, Dwayne Almond was a huge influence. So, um, as a child, I would listen to him all the time. Elmore James was another one. B.B. Um, King, Howlin' Wolf, that was all music that was playing in my house. And, and then pretty early on, about 13, 14, um, Kind of Blue, um, a lot of Coltrane records, a lot of Wayne Shorter. Um, so, you know, I've, being on the road from nine years old on, I've, I've been listening to um, a lot of the music that I still listen to now. I, I was lucky that uh, that at an early age, I actually started listening to pretty decent music. You know, being surrounded by musicians, it was it was nice. Uh, I, I didn't get stuck listening to the music of my peers, <laughs> which, which I, I probably wouldn't be doing what I'm doing if I did. I, I really feel like, as a musician, uh, you know, the music you put into your into your brain is really uh, down the road. That's what's going to come out. You know, you have to uh, you have to be careful what you listen to. <laughs> and this last question: This show goes out all over the world, so my question to you is what would you like to say to the world? <laughs> Put in a good word for us. We, we want to get this band. Uh, and I really feel with the music that we're playing that a way to really enhance it is for this band to really get out, play overseas, play wherever. We've we've been fortunate to do uh, Brazil, Malaysia, Japan. We really want to get over to Europe and play. Um, you know, we, we, we really want to, uh, to be able to balance touring in the States nonstop with, you know, hopefully spend at least half the year touring around the world. There's, there's so much music around that, uh, that I'd love to check out. So, uh, so put in the good word, get us over <laughs> wherever you are, help. <laughs> Mr. Trucks, it has been a pleasure. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you, man. I appreciate it.